forum for the divamag.com. So we'd just like to ask you, Keisha, why did you feel it was important to be here today? Uh, growing up, I didn't have uh, any of these opportunities as a young woman to be able to uh, be in a space with other young women of color, especially young women of color um, from my community with who share similar experiences and also have uh, women in my community who are older than me that I looked up to come and speak to me about some of their experiences, um, share their wisdom. So I mean, this is, this is eminent and I'm so grateful to be here and uh, really appreciative to Urban Arts for putting this on. What kind of challenges did you face as a young woman of color and being an artist? Um, one of the, you know, one of the biggest uh, challenges that I had to face was the expectations that were put on me. Um, I know specifically I was asked at one point uh, why I didn't do erotic poetry and I knew it had to, it was specifically because I was a young woman and a young woman of color, especially a black woman. Um, and I don't have anything wrong with erotic poetry. I am a fan of, of many poets who are erotic poets, but that's not what I specifically do. I mean, I, I may do it in the future, but that's not what I'm doing right now. Um, but just that expectation that because I uh, belong to a certain group of people that I'm, I'm supposed to do something, or I'm supposed to portray myself in a certain way, or I'm supposed to dress a certain way or speak a certain way. Um, so expectations have always been one of the, the greatest challenges for me. I heard you speak about your mother. What kind of influence did your mom have on you as a young woman growing up and as a poet? My mother had the greatest influence on me. My mother is still my greatest inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother is one of the most compassionate uh, people I know. She is fortunately put in the position where she can support uh, people back home. My family's Jamaican and Cuban, um, and people here. And she's always been very involved in, in the community. So as a young age, I knew that I had to be involved in the community. Um, I had to give back to my community. And I say it, she's a gangster. Because for me, being somebody who, who uh, you know, faces their fears and, and goes after what's and goes after what they want, um, speaks up for herself uh, and is so uh, like I said, caring and compassionate and loving. Um, uh, you know, for me that's that's a gangster quality to have is that is that she's she just she's just who she is and she embraces who she is and because of that I've been able to embrace who I am or so. Yeah, so we're here for the Divamac.com and we're being met away. <laughs> And we sat into a wonderful talk that you just gave, Thank talking you. about your experiences, and you know, I found it very inspirational. And I want to ask you, what are some of your inspirations in life and also in work? I'm a mom now, so in life, my kids inspire me to do a lot of really good things. I like organizations like Urban Arts. That's why I come back and do when they. I did this with them last year. I did it again this year. Uh, what inspires things when I look at the community work that these people are doing. I mean, a lot of them are sometimes come from single parent households. They're working full time jobs. But it is so important to them to empower the young women in their communities that they will take the time and make it happen. So you see food donations and uh, workshop donations and people donating space. I find that really humbling. So speaking of community, mm -hmm. being a woman of color, um, we found, as a woman of color myself, I found that there was a lack of resources for women of color, um, magazines that are, that are very kind of niche oriented and not really encompassing the full experience. You know. Did you find that at all? Um, in kind of products or um, representation, mainstream media. I was sharing with the girls that I came from a very small town in southern Alberta where it sometimes felt like my dad and I were the only people of color in the entire town. Yeah. So I know what it's like to grow up and to look and to feel different. And in fact, when my mom came to visit me out in uh, Mississauga, like, you know, 15 years ago, she started laughing and said, I said, what are you laughing at? And she said, it's so funny to see so many people who look like you. Because when I grew up, nobody else looked like me. Nobody had hair like me, nobody had skin like me. Um, and you know, when you looked on television, there was you know, no representation back then. And I feel really lucky to have come along right at the right time. The big networks were realizing we are not reflective and they were looking for people that would reflect more. And I had just enough experience so that you know, I wasn't coming to them completely green, mm -hmm. but not so much that they'd have to pay me oodles of cash. So I came in right at the right time. Diversity was a big push back in the, in the late 90s, you know, early 2000s, and so I was very fortunate to, to get involved with that. Dwight and I, I'm very proud to say, are the only of color evening anchor team in the entire country. No. And uh, we are both very proud to say that. And you know, we also like to point out that we got these jobs not because we're people of color, but because we have the experience. Mm -hmm. We both worked. And you put know, in the time. We put in the time. Yeah. We put in the time. We have the experience. So, but did you have any kind of professional mentorship? I did. Yeah. Um, I was really lucky to have certain people come along at certain times, and I always tell young women when I'm doing uh, career management stuff: when you come in at the beginning, 
they are very open to help you out. Send an email, especially in journalism. Maybe not all fields are this open, but in journalism, send an email to somebody who you watch, who you admire, and ask for 15 minutes of the time. Don't ask for two hours, because you won't get it, but ask for 15 minutes. Or send them a list of questions and see if they'll take the time to email you back. It's valuable uh, import and resource. And you know, when you're not working for a competitor, it's a lot easier to get We run the world. We run the world. Girls, girls.